Now, once you've bent both of your sides and placed them into the mold here, you'll notice that the length of these are a little bit extra long. And so we're gonna be trimming these where they need to, both on the bottom and on the top. And on your mold, you should have little center lines already drawn on there. And you're just gonna mark where that center line matches up. And you need to also make sure that your sides are pressed really firm into the mold. And then we're just gonna mark a little center line, transfer that over on the top edge of your board, right where that center line matches up. Just mark it on both your boards. And you can do this on the bottom as well as the top. And again, just make sure it's pressed real tight into your mold everywhere. And you're just gonna transfer a line where the center line marks up on your board. Then go ahead and take one of your sides out at a time and we're gonna draw that little center line mark down the top edges where we're gonna be trimming this off. So take a tri-square and you can see where you marked your little center line and you're just gonna just make sure that's a nice straight line drawn all the way down where we're gonna be trimming off the excess. Do this on the bottom and the top of each of your sides. lining it up where your center line mark was at and just drawing it straight down. Where you've drawn your line, we're gonna cut this off. I've got a little jig that we can set up on a bench top here. And we're gonna place our side through the little opening here and just line it up so your little line is perfectly even with the edge of this board right here. Nice and straight. And we're gonna take these little two black knobs and tighten them up that way it'll clamp your board in place where it needs to be cut and then we've got a back saw that we're going to use to cut this and when you're using the back saw you just need to make sure that it stays super tight up against this little block of wood here so it doesn't come away from that at all so I kind of take my fingers and kind of pinch the saw against that little stop and short little back and forth cuts until we can get that whole board trimmed off. Good. And we'll repeat that for the other side and also uh, again the top and the bottom where you drew those lines. Place both your sides back in your mold and just line up the two ends so they butt together. And once you have both your sides bent and trimmed, so that they butt together on the ends here. We need to glue on some little blocks on both sides, top and bottom, that help hold all this together. And I've pre-cut some pieces to help you with this. Um, one of them is about three and an eighth inch wide, three quarter inch thick, and it's got the edges beveled. And the other two, one's about three eighths thick, two and a quarter wide, just straight, and then the last one is about an inch and a quarter thick, two and a quarter wide, and again, the edges are beveled. With these pieces here, we're gonna be able to make some blocks that help glue these on. 
This one here that's three and an eighth wide is gonna be on the bottom. And you're gonna basically just place this next to your side here. Make sure your sides are pressed down nice and tight. And then just set it right next to your side and you're just gonna trace where it hits and that's where we're gonna cut this off at. On this little thin piece here, this 3 8 strip, go ahead and just measure something three inches long and we're gonna cut off a strip that's three inches long, again, on the miter saw. Now your leftover extra piece, make sure that goes back so someone else can use these. Okay, once you've cut your little three inch long piece here, you're gonna place that down at the top and then take your thicker board, put it on top of there. And then again, you're gonna be drawing a pencil line where you're trimming that thicker board. So these blocks should be the exact height of your sides once you place them in there. These two pieces here, we need to glue these together. And we want it to be so the bevel is on the inside and that it's nice and perfectly flush on the back when we glue this together. So we'll just put some glue on the end here, spread it around, line it up, and then just take a hand screw clamp and just clamp that together so that it stays that shape there. We'll let this dry for at least 30 minutes. So once you have those all dry and ready to go, what we need to do when we go to place them on here, it needs to be the same curvature that the body of the guitar is. And right now these boards are just flat on the back side. And so when you place it up against here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap. Same thing I'm on the, the top one up here. And so we just need to have that same curvature. So we'll just go to a sander and we'll just sand the, the flat faces here and here on this board. I will just use this vertical belt sander to do that. Just watch your fingers and just really small, gentle curves. Again, it won't take a lot. You can just go and then check it. And we'll get both the pieces. Okay, once you've sanded them so that they match that profile and you can just check it and just press it nice and tight and just make sure that those gaps are gone on both sides and then it'll be ready to glue on here so we'll just put a little bit of glue on the back sides here and here get some clamps and just with your mold get it lined up where it needs to be and we'll just throw a clamp here and throw another clamp here if there's any gaps we might have to add some more clamps just to kind of close any gaps Make sure you have some butcher paper down or something so that we don't get any glue on the bench tops. The mold also has some wax already spread on the inside of it. So if any glue squeezes through, it's not gonna get any glue to stick to your mold. We'll take one of these wooden hand screw clamps to clamp it. nice and firm and again anywhere where there might be still be a gap we'll add another clamp just on top just to kind of close the gap up there because the mold doesn't come up high enough to get the pressure we'll get the other side glued and clamped and we'll let it dry in here for at least 30 minutes The direction that this goes, this piece right here should be for the top of the guitar. And right now we have the, the back of the guitar facing up. So the, the flat part is facing down, which is that's the direction that should be facing.
make sure that everything's nice and tight. So if you tip it upwards and kind of just look at the, the joints, if there's any gap, like right here, there's a little gap still going on. We can throw another clamp on, on this side. It'll close this gap right here. Okay, now that these have dried, we can go ahead and just slip the whole thing out of the mold. And we need to come over to these dishes here. And I've got two different dishes. One of them is for the front part of your guitar and the other one's for the back. And they're different radiuses there. And we're gonna sand this top part and the bottom part of your guitar body until it's all sanded the, side, the shape of the dish. <clears throat> what we're gonna do with our little mold here is we're just gonna attach these little blocks of wood with some screws, just two of them over here, and then the other two kind of near the top. This will just help when we're sanding to kind of keep everything held still and firm. So we'll just take some screws and screw these onto our mold. Okay, so once you have all four of those on, we'll go ahead and slip your guitar back into the mold. And it doesn't matter which one you do first, as long as you're doing the correct dish part. So just kind of carefully fit your guitar back into the mold and slide it all the way down until it hits those little blocks of wood that we screwed on. So this is the back part that's sticking up above. And so we're gonna do the back part first. Uh, remember this part right here shows the, which is gonna be the front of the guitar. So because that part's, part's sticking up, we're gonna do that part first. We want to have the entire surface sanded from the dish. And you'll notice when you start sanding on the dish, it's only gonna sand kind of the top and the bottom. And the middle part's not gonna hit it as much. So you have to go until the entire surface is sanded. A little trick you can do is take maybe a pencil and just kind of draw a pencil line on this whole entire surface. And once your pencil mark's gone, you know that it hit the whole thing. Just a little light pencil on everywhere. Just, just kind of darken, or you can even take a marker or anything and just kind of just draw on that edge so you know when it's all gone and been sanded. Okay, and we'll go ahead and just use the dish. Again, we're using the back dish because we're sanding the back part of our guitar right now. We'll go all the way down until those pencil lines are all gone. Just kind of twist it back and forth, grabbing onto the middle part of the guitar. And it'll take some time, but every so often you can stop and you kind of flip it over and just kind of check the pencil marks and see how much is gone. You can kind of just see where it's hitting. So like a lot of this has been sanded and I can still see pencil mark here and same thing up here. So we gotta keep going until the whole surface is all sanded. Okay, now once you have it, so it's sanded all the way around the whole thing, go ahead and flip your guitar over to the other side and this will be the front. We've got both the front and the back sanded all the way around the whole thing. We're gonna be putting on this little kerfing. It looks like this. And it's got a thicker part at the top and then kind of tapers down. And it's got a whole bunch of little slits in it that allows it to bend and flex. And this is just gonna be attached around the whole perimeter of your guitar, both the front and the back sides. And so what you'll do is you'll just get a strip of this. Come, just come get these strips from me. And we're gonna put glue on the back side, just along that whole part there. Spread it around so it covers everywhere. We're gonna use these little clothespin for clamps. And they'll just kind of clamp it on all the way around the whole thing. So you'll need a total of four strips 
two for the front and two for the back. So again, just, just get those from me. These are very brittle and they actually break pretty easily. Um, it's not a big deal if it does break. If you have a piece break off, you can just place another little piece next to it. So like if this piece just breaks off and you're in the middle of gluing it on, it's okay because you can just have another piece start right next to it. The main thing is you want to make sure that the direction that the thickest part is facing upwards. And then you also just want to make sure that it's sticking up proud just the tiniest little bit. And so just the tiniest little bit so it has some more room to sand down. If this is pressed too far down, you're gonna to have to do a lot more sanding to get to it. If it's too far up, then you're gonna to have to do a lot of sanding just to get it down. So I just go just the tiniest little bit. You can kind of feel with your finger that it's sticking up from the side, just the littlest bit. And we'll just take some clothes pins and clamp it on. And we're just gonna clamp those all the way around the whole surface. Sometimes it does snap. And again, that's okay if it does snap, you'll just Close pin it on there. And we'll let these dry. You're gonna do it to all the parts. So you're gonna to have to have another one over here on this side, then we'll let those dry. We'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And just go ahead and load it up with all these little clothes pins just to get that clamp pressure on the whole thing. Now these little strips are a little bit longer than what you actually need. And so it's a good idea before you put glue on it to go ahead and place it where it needs to go and wrap it around the whole thing and just measure out where you're cutting this at because this whole thing is a little longer than what you really need. So you'll be able to wrap it around and then just snap it off where it needs to end there. So measure that out before you put the glue on it. Again, just make sure that the thicker part is facing up and that it sticks up just a little bit proud. Just use a whole bunch of these clothespins to attach them on. You get them all on, just let that dry at least 30 minutes. We'll take those off, flip it around, and then do the opposite side, same thing. Okay, again, now once it's been dry for at least 30 minutes, take all these off, we'll flip it over and do the same exact thing on the other side. So again, you should need four of these total, two for the front, two for the back, and just get these from the teacher. in your mold. It's best to do everything in your mold here just to keep the shape. So just make sure you have it in the mold when you do this. this dry for at least 30 minutes. Once you've taken off all the clothes pins, we'll come back to the dishes here and we'll do more sanding. Again, you may want to just take a pencil or something and just kind of shade in the whole thing. And we just want to go all the way down until the whole thing's sanded again. Just reminder again, that the front is the part that has this little part on it. So this is the back. And so make sure you use the correct dish and they're labeled here. So front for that part, back for this part. Every 
so often check it just to see if it needs more sanding anywhere. Just a little bit more on that middle part. Make sure you get the whole thing sanded all the way around. And now once you've got the whole thing all the way around sanded, you flip your guitar over in the mold and get the other part. And this one will now be the front. It's got this flat part here. Again, just check, make sure everything's all sanded all the way down, no bumps anywhere. And once you've got it flat on both sides, you should be done with the discs, which is nice.